Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, the weekly Deep Haven Developer demo session. It's December week one. We have two demos today. We're going to start with Devin, who is going to show off um, a quick tour through Google pricing. Hey, can everybody see my screen? Great. Um, so I want to talk just a, pretty quickly um, about taking an external API and hooking it up into Deephaven. Um, typically, we think about um, crypto price feeds or we think about weather feeds or IoT stuff. Um, but you might not think about you know the Google pricing uh, as actually a real-time feed. And they actually call it real-time right here. Um, so this is a good candidate for a potential ingestion into a deep haven uh, ticking table. Uh, so here's a blog post and it goes over uh, where to get the API. Uh, we'll jump over to a little bit of the de details right now. Uh, so this is a, a, a structured object, hierarchical structured object. It's a, a proto buff object. Um, and uh, to access it through Google, um, besides, you know, the typical price pages, you have to get a SKU and enter a number right here, um, or a SKU name right here, a SKU ID. And so this is the standard storage pricing uh, for a multi-region in the U.S., and it's 2.6 2 cents per uh, gigabyte month. Um, so let's take a look at what some of this data looks like when we normalize it into deep haven tables. Uh, so here are all the services uh, that Google offers. Uh, looks like as of today, there was 1,720. Um, I've gone ahead and uh, done a couple simple aggregations on it um, to see how many SKUs are under each service. And we can see the compute engine has the most things that can be priced, uh, almost 10,000. And it's the only service that actually has more than one provider uh, providing prices. Most of the time, Google is the provider. Um, here, there's there's nine providers, and there's some other providers along the way. Uh, if you look at a SKU object, this is what it looks like. Um, here is pointing to the earliest service ID, a description, a provider, um, and some more uh, details that have been joined in. Uh, what you might want to do is drill down into the specific compute engine SKUs. So this is talking about starting up a server, uh, and prices for that, or you might want to look at networking prices, or you might want to see how much it costs to uh, buy a domain from Google, um, or maybe one of the most interesting ones is how much does it cost to store data there? And so here are the cloud storage SKUs. Um, as a uh, helpful user interface layer over this, we can provide more details than the actual uh, SKUs provide themselves. So we can annotate these with the type of storage it is, the location, whether it's early delete or not. So if we are providing this as a service to other users, we could annotate the cloud storage SKUs with a little bit informa more information. So this is, you know, from parsing the description, it's a standard type, uh, it's in Tokyo, et cetera, like that. So that's how you can take and extend an existing uh, API. Uh, and then the most interesting thing is actually getting the prices for all those SKUs. Uh, so here is all the prices for the 33,000 different SKUs that uh, Google has. You might see that it's not ticking, uh, and that's because these prices actually don't update that often. Um, but if they did, uh, we'd see them uh, tick in prices right here. And so uh, let's go ahead and get this standard storage US multi-region SKU that we've already got over here. Um, I haven't joined it in, in here, but we can go ahead and filter by here, and we can see... Uh, the price is a line right here, uh, 2.6 cents, uh, and over here it's 2.6 cents. Uh, so this is just a quick demo of how to um, look at the structure of uh, Google services and SKUs and prices and potentially a, a, a framework for annotating it with more information if you wanted to consume it um, in, in any different way. Um, I've got one more quick example. Um, I have a public publisher on the internet that uh, we've done for some demos, and you might have seen these prices somewhere else, but this is uh, available publicly on the internet right now, um, and you can go ahead and grab crypto USD prices, um, and it should be ticking right here. 
Um, so I, I'm hoping um, as Deep Haven continues to mature that we're able to uh, provide some more real-time examples where we're officially the publishers or republishers of the data. And so that's, that's something I'm pretty excited for. Thank you. Uh, next up is Colin, and he's going to show us how to run Deep Haven without Docker or Envoy. So one of the, oops, it's not showing yet. Entire screen, there we go. One of the uh, interesting things about using gRPC in Java, one of the annoying things is that it only works in Netty, um, which means if you are an organization with lots and lots of clustered servers all over the place and you wanna have some great big load balancer that splits between them, uh, that's, that's probably okay. But if you are running a single application that needs to serve HTML content and JavaScript to run the page and then call your own APIs, uh, you're in a bit of trouble. We have solved that up until now by using Envoy uh, that sits in front of technically three different servers and makes them all available to you at one URL uh, and deals with SSL in just one place, et cetera. Um, but we have been looking forward to a day when we didn't have to do that. Um, we didn't have to copy data back and forth between each of those processes every time you request something. And this is uh, the culmination of that work, the ability to run a gRPC service in uh, any servlet container. I picked Jetty here since it seems to be the best behaved using HTTP2. Uh, and I've also gone ahead and built our WebSocket proxy uh, in a way that will work with um, um, with Jetty and um, still be able to talk to our, our, um, our front end. And this launches now just as any regular Java main uh, from IntelliJ. It is about as fast to launch as our existing Docker stuff, except you don't have to worry about the other processes. And you also don't have to make building and running separate steps. So you are building and running in one command. And that brings up the server, which is already running. I'm not fast enough to get over here. Um, for developers, this is going to make life a little bit easier because we can say, hey, just go ahead and run whatever it is you want to do um, and, and edit a little bit more quickly. Uh, for consumers, it's, it may also make life easier in a couple different situations. We're not exactly sure what all those are going to look like, um, but at least the right off the bat ones are where you're running all of your Python libraries and editing them locally. You don't want to mess around with copying them into Docker. You just want to say, hey, here's my virtual environment. Let me go ahead and install some wheels, edit some code, and get right to it. Um, and yeah, all the different commands you'd expect to work, uh, just work here. You can, uh, yeah, as long as gRPC works at all, pretty much all of it works, streaming data included. Well, thanks, everyone. That's it for the week. So we'll. Those are exciting demos. Yeah. Great, guys. Bye. Great job.